Hi guys and welcome to this another video in our Maths Guru series for General Maths. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome. My name's Darren, uh, Maths Guru, and um, yeah, I'm trying to do everything I can to make maths interesting and entertaining and funny and real world and actually easy because maths is a big fat trick and nothing but smoke and mirrors. Oh yes! Now, if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, but certainly every time you click that subscribe button. I just know that someone's watching and it makes making these videos worthwhile because otherwise I'm just talking to myself like a lunatic. Leave a comment below if you want and let me know how you found the video. Also, MathsGuru.com is over there for you where the videos are time coded with downloadable notes and in organ in order of the textbook channel chapters. And there is so much more over there and it's free to sign up. All right, head over there and let your mates know. Now, what are we doing today? Well, our learning objectives is to understand what the word frequency means. You may already know this. Understand what a frequency table is used for, understand what a bar chart is used for, and understand what the mood is. Now, again, some of these things you will already know from previous years, and that's good. But this course feeds directly into further maths units three and four, and it is phenomenally important. If you're not doing those courses and no idea what I'm talking about, data and all this stuff is really important, helpful in every single topic. All right, recap, it's the second lesson. How much more can I recap? In the last video, if you haven't seen it, it was phenomenal. But we talked about categorical data, numerical data, and what data is, all right, and how we can sort of break those down into nominal, ordinal, discrete, and continuous. Oh, ka -ching. yeah. Now, what is the frequency of something? When I was old, we had one of those great things that called a radio um, that you could turn a dial and a little thing would move up and down. It. And you spend about 25 minutes trying to find the perfect channel to be on and you've missed the song. You get halfway through, Tiffany, I think we're alone now. Don't sing, it's very embarrassing. And then you'd miss it because you'd go, oh, or it'd be crackly, right? Now that's a radio frequency, nothing to do with maths, because luckily frequency means number of things you have. End of. It's a number of things you have. Frequency can be two things, but we'll come back to that in a moment. So for example, if I ask 50 people, the uh, number of uh, people I would have would be 50. Yeah, and I know that says there randomly, it says the frequency of questions would be 50. Now, nah, if I ask 50 people 50 questions, then I would have 50 people, that's a frequency, and 50 questions. That's a frequency, and I'll update the slide behind me for the downloadable notes. So what is a frequency table? Now with data, we want to try and make sense of it. That's the whole point of data. And we can do a table in, in a minute, we'll draw some diagrams, because our, our, our brains love pictures. We are far better off with pictures than we are with lots and lots of text. And you'll agree, who wants to read lots and lots of text when a picture can do it for you? So here, ladies and gentlemen, is a frequency table. And obviously, I've asked a number of people what they actually like for lunch. How many people did I ask? Well, that's given here. So 30 people. How would I know that? Well, again, I could add these number things up. Hold on a moment. Number. Didn't I just say number was frequency? Absolutely. And you'll notice at the top of my table, I have frequency. But I seemingly have two columns. Why on earth do I have two columns? Holding good time. We will get to that in a moment. Wax on, wax off. Slow down, grasshopper. Uh, if anyone's got any idea what that's all about, it was the Karate Kid. Terrible, terrible, terrible. My apologies. Okay, so the point of it is, I've asked 30 people, and they've given me the choices of sandwich, salad, and pie. How many people wanted a sandwich? Well, again, I can just look here and I go, seven people wanted a sandwich. So the frequency of sandwiches would be seven. What about the salads? 10, and obviously pies would be 13. And when I add together 7, 10, and 13, I in fact get 30. So that's my 30 people. All right, that's the total, and that becomes important. Now, obviously, I can see here that my percentages seem to be 99.9. .9. That's messy with my head because it should really be 100. But there are also frequency percentages or percentage frequencies that we can have as well. So, how do we work these out? Well, a good old formula. You guys should know percentages off the top of your head now, yeah? If you do a test, what would you do? If you got 30 out of 50 on a test, what would you do? You do 30 divided by 50 times 100. The fact you times by 100 turns a decimal into a percentage, but we have to get the decimal first. And generally speaking, we have something divided by something before we times by 100. Now, for percentage frequency, as we can see here from our formula, we've got the count or the number of divided by the total, and again, total number of, 
and then we times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So if we wanted to check where did we get this 23.3 from, it's actually seven. So there were seven sandwiches out of the 30 people I spoke to, which when I times by 100, will in fact give me, well, it'll give me 23.33333. But we're gonna round it, because we don't wanna put all these 0.3s on. So the question may say, round it to one decimal place. Okay, ka -ching, round it to one decimal place, 23.3. Likewise, if I look at this 13, the calculation I would have done would have been 13 divided by 30 times by 100, because I've got 13 pies out of 30 people asked times it by 100 to turn it to percent, and that would give me 43.3. Now again, this 99.9 .9 is messing with my head because ideally that should really read 100%. Now, if it doesn't, my advice to you, and keep this between us, is to fudge one of the numbers. So actually, I probably would have changed that one there to 33.4, just so that I would have added it all up. Yeah, mathematically correct, mm, but it done off sort out that 100%, yeah, he says. now. Obviously, showing data in a table isn't particularly helpful to us. We like diagrams. And when we have a frequency table, because this is categorical data, the one of the best ways we can actually represent this is something called a bar chart. Now, you've met bar charts before. There are rules to these bar charts, all right? So up the top goes frequency. Along the side goes the category. So in this situation, we'd have sandwich, salad, pie. And then we would draw bars. Now, the most important thing to notice here is that there are gaps between the bars, right? So bar charts must have gaps. Histograms, if you know what a histogram, no gaps. But that's a different thing because histograms deal with numerical data. Oh, are we coming up to that? Oh, yes, we're coming up to that later on. Now, obviously, you guys, if you are allowed to have summary books, would like to have stuff written down so that it gives you an idea of what a bar chart is. As I said here, I've got important points for bar charts. One, frequency or percentage frequency is shown on the vertical axis. I'll explain why in a moment. The variable being displayed is potted on the horizontal, and that's the category. So that's what it's saying. So you put the categories there, and you put the percentage frequency or just the frequency on the vertical axis. The height of the bar gives the frequency. So obviously you would make sure the height of the bar matches the frequency of that individual data item. The bars are drawn with gaps in it to indicate the value as a separate category, right? So there's gaps and there is one bar for each category. Now later on we can have things called segmented bar charts, but we won't rush things. Now as I say, there are two versions of a bar chart. What are they? Well, each version deals with one column of the table, right? There is a frequency and there is a percentage frequency, but believe it or not, they're gonna look exactly the same. The numbers on the vertical axis are just gonna be slightly different. So here we go. I wasn't gonna sit there and draw these. These are the two that are already there from the Cambridge um, textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your questions and your examples. I can't be more grateful, all right? Your books absolutely rock and I'm stoked. So in statistics, important to write reports. All right, again, having a graph, you know, sometimes we see a graph, we might not be given the original table and we have to write something meaningful about it. And with bar charts, one of the most meaningful things we can write is about the highest column. Right, now obviously they're not going to call it highest column in math because that'd be way too easy, wouldn't it? Oh, Barry's at it again. Slap him. Yeah, he sat in his office and he's gone, mm, we don't want to call it the highest column. And let's call it, oh, I don't know, the modal column. Modal. I mean, for goodness sake, where on earth do we get modal from? Well, believe it or not, it's from what you did in year seven and eight and nine and ten, the mode. And if you remember the mode, it stands with MO. So does the most, so does the word most. We're looking for the most, the column that has the most in it. And again, we can call it the modal category. Why? Because when it says modal category, we were saying the situation, the modal category is pies. But you don't just say pies. You would say the modal category is pies with a frequency of 13, for example, yes? You must put the value of the frequency as well. When you're writing this, it's so, so important, all right? Now, a lot more on this coming, but I think we'll call it a day for this video. Thanks so much for watching. It has been fun, hopefully short, and hopefully entertaining. Again, if you've enjoyed it and you're still here watching, leave me a comment below, tell me what you thought. Let your mates know, TikTok,
Facebook, Instagram, send the word out because honestly guys, I just want to help students do as well as they possibly can. I'm Darren the Maths Guru. Thank you very much for watching. Head over to uh, YouTube to subscribe, Maths Guru to sign up. And if not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.